The merciful love of the Lord fills the earth. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You are very welcome to Mass today on the fourth Sunday of Easter, sometimes known as Good Shepherd Sunday because the Gospel is about the Good Shepherd. Jesus is the Good Shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. And we pray especially today and talk about vocations, particularly to the priesthood and religious life. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate Mass today, we call to mind our sins and ask God's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of your kingdom, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Peter said, Rulers of the people and elders, if you are questioning us today about an act of kindness to a cripple and asking us how he was healed, then, then I am glad to tell you, and indeed would be glad to tell the whole people of Israel, that it was by the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, the one you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by his name and by no other that this man is able to stand up perfectly healthy here in your presence today. This is the stone rejected by the builders, but which has proved to be the keystone. For of all the names the world given to men, this is the only one by which we can be saved. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. I will thank you, for you have given answer, and you are my saviour. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. 
Blessed in the name of the Lord is he who comes. We bless you from the house of the Lord. I will thank you for you have given answer and you are my saviour. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his love has no end. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children, and that is what we are. Because the world refused to acknowledge him, therefore it does not acknowledge us. My dear people, we are already the children of God, but what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my own sheep and my own know me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd is the one who lays down his life for his sheep. The hired man, since he is not the shepherd and the sheep do not belong to him, abandons the sheep and runs away as soon as he sees the wolf coming. And then the wolf attacks and scatters the sheep. This is because he is only a hired man and he has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for my sheep. And there are other sheep I have that are not of this fold, and these I have to lead as well. They too will listen to my voice, and there will be only one flock and one shepherd. The Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me. I lay it down of my own free will, and as it is my power to lay it down, so it is in my power to take it up again. And this is the command I've been given by my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. A mother became very anxious because her daughter could not find a man to marry. One day she mentioned to her mother that a certain man had eyes for her. The mother asked, what religion is she? The daughter said, I'm afraid she's got, he's got none. The mother said, it would be very difficult for you to marry a man with no religion. Why don't you teach him about our faith, the Catholic faith? The daughter agreed and she started teaching him about the Catholic faith. Finally, when it seems they were becoming an item, a serious item, the girl came home with a worried look on her face and her mother asked her, was, there everything, was everything okay? She replied, I think I taught him too much. Now he wants to become a priest. I know that in times past, especially in Ireland where I come from, a lot of young men were leaned on somewhat to join the priesthood. One priest, who later left the ministry, thought that his mother should have been ordained and not him. However, we can't blame those people in those far-off days because the Catholic faith and Catholic culture was sort of in their bones. People used to say, with a priest in a family, and, believe it or not, a pump in the yard, what more could you want? Today, I think it's a bit different. The message of the gospel which we preach will often go against the grain. That is, if we're going to take it seriously, and we don't compromise the gospel. Sometimes I feel we're trying to, they say that we're supposed to evangelize the world. Well, we could be in danger of the world evangelizing us first. Last year, 
Archbishop Nichols cautioned priests in their preaching not to skim over the difficult parts of the gospel and church teaching just to suit themselves. I think it goes without saying and it shows that us priests also have feet of clay. That being said, I'd say for a better time to be a priest. Then, why the shortage of vocations? Like many mistakenly think, celibacy is hardly the cause of the vocation shortage. The cause is far more likely to do with the repression of our innate desire for God, more evident in modern times than in the past. Repression, the word repression, has negative connotations. Over a century ago, Sigmund Freud reminded us of that. But today, unlike the repression Sigmund Freud was talking about, we have repressed our sense of God and of the transcendent. By and large, People with an exclusively secular mindset have taken control of the higher levels of government, academia, and the media itself. We don't do God, one politician reminded us. Ten years ago, or over ten years ago now, Pope Benedict said, Faith in God, the domain of spirituality, is banished from everyday life or it's marginalized. Our spiritual side has been repressed. This is the new neurosis of our time, our silence regarding God, Pope Benedict said. According to him, the crisis of vocations is basically a crisis of faith itself. Vocation shortage, marriage shortage, children shortage has a lot to do with the repression of our religious sense. I noticed, for instance, from our baptismal register that in 1958, here in St. Vincent's Parish, there were over a hundred baptisms. In 2020, 60 years later, it was only in the teens. St. John Paul II saw this anti-life way of life indicative of the absence of God, he said, in people's hearts. And one of the ripple effects, of course, of this downturn is in the shortage of religious vocations. But for anyone who responds generously to the call to the priesthood or consecrated life of the Good Shepherd, and he or she lives up to it, Jesus promises a hundredfold in this life and indeed happiness in the next. The call of the Good Shepherd does not disappoint. Surely, the pandemic involving the closure of churches and social isolation should make us all sit up and think more deeply about the deeper questions of life and faith. The recovery in vocations will depend upon it. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. 
For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. by the mystery of this water and wine. May we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink lord god we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and he gave it to the disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up
for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Good Shepherd has risen, has laid down his life for his sheep, and willingly died for his flock. Alleluia. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.